Hi guys, welcome again to our another video lecture of ours for for those of course who have not attended the video conferencing lecture last uh, yeah the other day. So uh, it's here again. I'm here again for the YouTube video lecture for as a supplementary for of course the lessons that we had on our M groups. So. Here's our lesson 5, which is the first topic for our midterm, which is about daily motion and horizontal system of coordinates. So here, uh, we will be discussing about uh, uh, what is horizon, what is the ratio of horizon, and its relevance to, to how the, the position of the a certain observer is being derived or being taken uh, whenever you are uh, when whenever you use uh, the celestial observable body like star sun and etc as well as we will be defining a little bit of the PCX triangle here and uh, the nadir zenith and nadir and the uh, azimuth so the first one here uh, whenever we we look into the sea or we are in the open sea, we always see this line wherein it's the boundary or it's the line wherein the sky and the sea meets. Now, we call that one as your horizon. Or here, as per the definition from the Bowditch, the line where the earth and the sky appear to meet is called the visible or apparent horizon. So we call this line as your visible or apparent horizon. Now another definition that we got from the Bowditch is that a plane perpendicular to the two vertical is a horizontal plane. And its intersection with the celestial sphere is a horizon. So we define this circle wherein, or great circle wherein it passes through the zenith in Nadir as a vertical circle. And that if... Uh, this uh, plane, this plane, we're referring to this plane, no? This horizontal plane, no? A plane perpendicular to the true vertical, no? Which is uh, perpendicular to, for example, if you are standing here and there is uh, a point here and then uh, you will be uh, vertically, you will be, you will be parallel, uh, perpendicular, no, to, the, to the zenith and the nadir, then that's your horizon no, as per the definition. As you can see here in this example, there, there is a great circle here and uh, there is a, a plane here that is uh, created. No, so that is uh, our horizon as per the observer natin. Now, we have also uh, other definitions here. Uh, it says now that it is the celestial horizon if the plane passes through the center of the earth. So, for example, if this is your earth and that great circle or that plane passes through the center of the earth, then we call that one as your celestial horizon. The geodal horizon, if it is tangent to the earth, well, if there is that plane, then a certain point on that plane, no, a single point on that plane uh, is tangential to the surface of the earth, then that's a geodal horizon, no? the, the plane that is created. And then we have also the sensible horizon wherein it passes through the eye of the observer. Like for example, if this is your observer, natin, then there is uh, this plane that will pass through the eye of the observer, then we call that one as your sensible horizon no so we'll be using this one all of these things will be used for the horizontal or horizon coordinates system that uh, we will be discussing we will be tackling soon no and this is a uh, one coordinate system which is used for the celestial navigation so since the radius of the earth is considered negligible with respect to that of the celestial sphere these horizons became superimposed and most, um, most measurements are referred only to the, to the celestial horizon. This is sometimes called as the rational 
horizon. So uh, when you say po, kasi we have a uh, we have a lot of horizon, diba? And we are only using one uh, horizon, no, for the measurement, and that is your celestial horizon, or as per the Bowditch, it is also called your rational horizon, which we'll be using later on for the measurement that we'll be using for the basis of the measurement natin for the various uh, uh, coordinate system or in this coordinate or the horizon coordinate system that we'll be using for the celestial navigation. So we'll be unlocking some terms. No? One there is zenith. No? Zenith is the point of the celestial sphere vertically overhead the observer. So, as, uh, for example, this is your observer natin. What is directly above you know, the, the point on the celestial sphere, we have been talking about, about the celestial sphere already, that uh, it is the projection of the sky, no? extended no? No? projection, no? Uh, the earth as the center, and then projected yung, yung sky natin on the celestial sphere. No? And the point Above the observer natin on the celestial sphere, we call that one as your zenith. And, of course, the opposite of the zenith, the, the point on the celestial sphere directly below the observer, we call that one as your nadir. Again, zenith is directly above and the nadir is directly below. Now we have the vertical circle. The vertical circle is a great circle of the celestial sphere through the zenith and the nadir. So in the horizon coordinate system, or horizontal coordinate system, when a great circle passes through the zenith and the nadir, as I previously had uh, talked about, no? if it passes through the zenith and the nadir, then we call that one as your vertical circle. Now we have you have to take note also that we have uh, kinds of vertical circle like this one the prime vertical circle or prime vertical which is which passes through the east and the west points of the horizon now take note that it passes through the zenith and the nadir and also it passes through the east point and of course in this illustration on the other side the, the west point we have we have also this principal vertical circle. The principal vertical circle passes through the zenith and the nadir and at the same time passes through the north and the south. So, this one, ang, ang prime vertical circle natin defines your east and the west points while the principal vertical natin defines your north and the south points natin. Let's go with elevated pole. Elevated pole is the celestial pole that appears Take note above the horizon. That's why it's elevated pole. Well, we also have this depressed pole. Depressed pole uh, is the section of the pole which projects below the horizon at a given place. So whenever that pole, no, uh, that pole is not visible, of course, then it's, it's not. Uh, it is below the horizon. It's not visible, and it's. Uh, if it's a pole above the horizon, then it's visible, no? So that's elevated pole. We go with your upper meridian. The upper meridian is the semicircular segment of the meridian that is above the observer's horizon. On the opposite side, of course, of the celestial sphere from the upper meridian is the lower meridian. So this one is your upper meridian natin. And then uh, on the other side would be your lower branch natin, or your lower meridian. And we already defined this one, no? That uh, we have your meridian here. Now, let's proceed with your altitude or your elevation, which is defined as the angle the object makes with the horizon. Now, take note, for example, that this is the observer. What is above him is the zenith, as I said, and then this is the star that he is observing. No, from the horizon up to the star, the angle that is being made here is called your altitude or your elevation. Then from the zenith to the star, we call that one that one as your zenith distance. Okay. 
This one is your altitude and this one is your zenith distance. We'll be using this one later on for the calculation of our PZX triangle. Now, the, the instrument that we are using to measure this altitude of the star is what we call your sextant. The sextant is an instrument, navigational instrument, that we use to measure the altitude of the stars. The concept there of the sextant is that it brings, you will bring the, that certain celestial body, you know, and then down to the, the, the horizon. Then while you're bringing it down, the, the instrument itself is measuring a certain angle, and that angle is your elevation at then or you're at altitude. Anything below the horizon now is a negative angle. Uh, I'll proceed first to the zenith distance. Zenith distance, the angular distance measured along the vertical circle because this one creates a vertical circle. It passes through the zenith and the nadir. And then that uh, angular distance along the vertical circle natin, along the vertical circle natin, we call that one as your zenith distance. Wherein it's a distance or the angle that is being formed from the zenith to the celestial body that you are observing. We go with your azimuth. The azimuth is the object's cardinal direction such as north, east, south, or west. It is specified as the horizontal angle the object makes with the reference direction such as true north. So in this case now when we say azimuth, we are measuring it counterclockwise uh, rather, not counterclockwise but clockwise. Now and that's a direction from the north going to the uh, going to the direction kung nasaan yung ating celestial body that you are observing. So this one creates a vertical circle here and the point here could be from this one to the azimuth we call that uh, from to the, to the north we call that one as your azimuth. Opposite to which on this angle, natin is azimuth angle. We'll be defining later on what is an azimuth angle. Now, here's your horizontal coordinate system. As you can see, to wrap up again, we have your zenith here, which is directly above your observer. We have the nadir. You have the uh, points here for the prime vertical. And then you have your other parts here. I hope we're doing it great. Now, for the quadrant bearing, no, this method of measuring the, the angle, no, in this method, the compass dial is divided into four quadrants, namely northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest, and these angles up to 90 degrees are measured away from the north or south, whichever is nearer towards the east and west direction. So remember always that this quadrant bearing uh, method of uh, saying or identifying the, the bearing, no? we, we always measure from the north or from the south. So if it's nearer here, we'll be measuring it from the south to that angle or from he, to this one, from south to this one because it's nearer to the south. So if it's north, then we'll be measuring it from the north. At the same time, we are we will be naming it according to which quadrant it belongs to. For example, if this one, no, the observed body is here, and take note that it belongs to the northwest quadrant. So you just need to write northwest there, and then you measure the angle from the north because it's northwest. Then that's 45 degrees west. We're following the azimuth natin. The azimuth sabi natin is galing so north, then clockwise to the direction of course of the celestial body that we have. So here, if you'll be measuring it, that's 315 degrees. True. I hope it's correct now. Correct naman. Quadrant bearing natin for this example, no? Take note natin that your that your uh, the bearing natin can be found on the northeast. Northeast natin, then how many degrees meron tayo dito? That's 45. So that's north 45 degrees east or north uh, 45 degrees northeast. The azimuth, as, it, as we said, comes from the north. So measuring towards the celestial body, so that's your azimuth of 0, 0, 0.45 degrees. For this example, 
the quadrant bearing is on the which direction? It's on your southwest. Good. And then we have to measure, you know, we have to measure this angle because it come it's near the south. You know? So uh, let's say for example it's 45 degrees. So we 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 say that it's 45 degrees south west or south 45 degrees west. Then the next question there would be how much is the acid one? We'll be measuring it from the north. So how much is your answer? Sige. Uh, it's this one, this half is actually 180. So to simplify, it's 180 plus this 45. So you'll get that's 180 plus 45, 225. 225 for the azimuth method. So the azimuth, no, the compass dial is divided into 360 degrees. North is 0 degrees or 360. Angles are measured clockwise. Take note clockwise. And we have been talking about that the east is 90 degrees, the south is 180 degrees, the west is 270 natin. Uh, we've, we've made here an illustration or we've, we've come up or we had borrowed an illustration here wherein there's the, this is the zenith and this shows the zenith angle, this is the elevation of the sun. And then when we say azimuth, if the, the, the north is here, then you go through that certain certain angle natin that becomes your angle natin which is your azimuth angle natin uh, we have two terminologies to use the azimuth angle and the azimuth it is the azimuth if it mesh if it is measured clockwise through 360 starting at the north point on the horizon which we, we are talking about simula pa kanina, but when we say azimuth angle, it is measured either clockwise or counterclockwise, we already told that one, through 180 degrees, starting at the north point of the horizon in the north latitude and south point on the horizon in the south latitude. So, yun na po, uh, ina-apply natin, wherein, for example, ito po yung azimuth natin, no? from the north going there, that is your uh, natin dito is your azimuth angle natin. It's like your 360 minus the azimuth. You can get this one. Now, this becomes your illustration natin. No? This is your zenith. This this one is the the sun be, being observed or the celestial body that you're being that you are observing. For example, you are here now. This is the zenith and this is the star that you're observing. Now uh, there is this angle that is being created, which is your azimuth. Then the angle inside the, this triangle you know, being formed by the north celestial pole, then this one, then this one. This one is called your azimuth angle. Now remember also that from this point, the north pole, to this uh, observed body, we call this one as your, ano nga yun? We call this one as your polar distance. From here to here, from to the equinoxial natin, the, the angle that is being made here, we call that one as your declination natin. If we are talking about the zenith, no, the zenith, from the zenith to the equinoxial natin, no? So, eto yon. And then from the zenith to this, uh, from the zenith to here, ang tawag natin dito is your zenith distance. Diba? Ito yun. Zenith distance. From the zenith to the star, we call this your zenith distance. So from the zenith to the star or the celestial body observed, then this one is called your zenith distance. So how do we measure the, the azimuth of the sun, for example? No? So it's just you use your azimuth circle on your comp or on your gyro compass, and we can actually uh, use that one uh, to identify to which direction the sun is. 
So, you just need to align the sun, kung nasaan. Titignan mo siya sa gyro compass, kung ano yung angle na pinform dito. Then, um, with regards to the true north, then that becomes your azimuth natin. We have your amplitude. That a celestial body's amplitude is the arc between the observed body on the horizon and the point where the observer's horizon intersects the celestial equator. For example, meron tayo dito horizon. And we have your polar north here, then the body, then the zenith distance, no? And then there, there is an angle formed here because the arc between the observed body on the horizon and the point where the observer horizon intersects. So this one, kasi ito yung meridian ng ating zenith or the vertical circle natin. So this becomes, the angle being formed here becomes your amplitude. Yes, Paul. So, we had discussed that one and we could actually lead into the PZX triangle. We had actually discussed in another video already in the past that what is this, uh, Zen uh, this PZX triangle. This PZX triangle will be used not to identify or to solve for the position of the observer on the Earth. Now, Again, going back to, to remembering the things that we had learned about the PCX, the P represents your, uh, this one, this P represents your polar uh, celestial pole, natin. the X represents the observed body, and the Z represents your zenith, which is, ang B natin dito is your observer. Now, directly above the observer is your Z. This one is the object observed. From the x to the p, that's your polar distance. x to the equinox, equinox Latin, this becomes your, anong tawag dito? Yes, we call this one as your declination. From the zenith to here is your zenith distance. Because supposedly, there's vertical circle na iikot dito. And, uh... We have here, no, ito yung sinasabi ko sa, in sa inyong declination natin. From this one, you are observing this one. So, here are the parts of your PZX triangle. No, so you have your P here, and then 90 degrees minus the declination. Bakit po ganun? 90 degrees minus the declination. Kasi diba, ang sabi natin yung declination is this angle. So, this angle kasi from the equinoxial up to the polar is 90 degrees. So, that's an arc. So, the arc, to get the arc na ito, so that's declination, this, de this part minus 90 because from here to here is 90. So, minus nun, that becomes your uh, ating 90 minus declination. Then, here, uh, it's simply, actually, it's very simple. The north papunta dito sa ating equator, ang latitude niya is 90 degrees. There is a 90 angle natin. From the equator up, no, nag increase yung angle natin. And basically, the observer natin, no, ang position ng observer natin on the earth, no, that is your latitude position. Latitude position. So basically, we can solve for this one, no? And that becomes your latitude natin, which is your 90 degrees minus the latitude. You can get this distance, the P to the, the P to Z, the P to Z. And then we have your X to Z, which is your zenith distance, and we have already discussed this one, no? And uh, to simplify, no, from ang, ang ating, ano kasi, ang ating uh, dinefine natin na from the star to the horizon, that is your altitude. So, that's 90 degrees. From the zenith papunta dito sa horizon natin, since that is perpendicular, and that forms 90 degrees. So, from here to here, that's 90 degrees. If you want... To get the zenith distance, all you have to do is to get the altitude, measure it from the sextant, ito na, and then 90 minus this one, you get the zenith distance. Diba? 
Also, we have your L LHA or the local R angle natin. And we can actually simply uh, get this one from our nautical almanac. And we have discussed this one in the previous videos that we had. No? So, for the LHA natin, it forms your LHA kasi as per definition ng LHA natin, that's the meridian of the observer. Itong tawag natin yung meridian ng observer ito. And then, to the meridian ng ating uh, observed body, so the angle being formed there is called your LHA. So, basically, we can use all of these uh, things no, to measure your the, the position of the observer, no? Yun yung ginagamit ng ating mga old seafarers natin, no? Wherein they, they may be able to identify their position even the open sea. There is no, uh, there is no uh, geographical position that you can get the position, but there you have only the stars, then still you can measure or you can identify your position on the earth. With, of course, this concept of our PZX triangle. So, ito po siya. No? Ito po ang ating uh, illustration for our PZX triangle. And I hope na naintindihan natin ang lesson for today. To, further, to give you further uh, view about this, about this one, I found this image on the Google. And I really find it very, very good. And it details you about the parts of the PZX triangle. As you can see, you have the zenith angle here, or the azimuth angle here. You also have the LHA, the geographical position of the star. The, uh, the, the, then you have here, this is the star, and this is your uh, position of the star on the PZX triangle. You have the pole here, and you have the observer on this part. So, we can be able to uh, solve for, for the, uh, what you call this, we can be able to solve for the PZX or the, the, the parts of the PZX triangle and it's actually in, involves your spherical trigonometry ata, if I'm not mistaken. So, you are, uh, we'll not be solving this one, maybe on the next lessons that we have. Yes, Bob. So for any concerns, you may email me for clarifications. You can also send me a private message on FP Messenger for any concerns. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you learned something. I would appreciate if you have questions. Just message me. I'll be there to, uh, to answer as, as much as I can. So thank you very much for watching this video. I have also another videos that is being provided for you from lesson 1 to lesson 2 and uh, lesson 3 but I skipped the lesson 4 and this one is lesson 5. So I hope that you learned something for today. Thank you for watching and stay safe.